Hey, Steven, how you doing, man? I'm doing good, hermano. How about you? Doing well, man. Doing well. You're over there in Wilmington, right? Yep, Wilmington, North Carolina, on the beach. Yeah, dude, we just miss each other. I uh, I was with my yeah. friends there, and but uh, dude, how long have you been in Wilmington? So I've been in Wilmington for a year and a half now. I uh, came here for school, um, originally from Charlotte. So I'm I'm really enjoying the change from like kind of this more cityer area to a, a beach town. Yeah, I think there's something a little bit um, special about the people that are attracted by a body of water. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Dude, that's funny you say that because my buddy who lives in Wilmington, he was telling me that like his theory on why beach people who live in beach towns are so cool is because they're grounding every day. They're barefoot, they're on the sand, they're in the water, they're always like soaking sun. So yeah, yeah there's there's definitely something to it. Uh, lots of surfers here for sure. Yeah. Um, I do hate that we missed each other though. I was like, I had just gotten surgery and I was kind of bedridden, so there wasn't much I could do. Yeah, no, it, it's you also like roll, right? You do like a little bit of like jujitsu. Yeah, right? yeah. So I, I train here at a, at a gym um, close by. And um, I, I started in Charlotte, but um, yeah, I found a gym here. Yeah, man. Well, hopefully you uh, recover soon because um, I'm actually going to go back to Wilmington pretty soon. My buddy actually bought a house there recently and he's doing like renovations on it. So we're going to go and help him out. So. Yeah, dude, I'll, I'll definitely see you. Dude, yeah, man, that's awesome. And yeah, let me know when you're here. Um, I'm almost off crutches, so I can do do some cool stuff by then for sure. Hell yeah, man. So I know that um, you know a lot about like mindset and uh, specifically like the the paradigm shift of like not being reliant on a sole source of income. We were talking a little bit about that. Like there's the, like a system or a matrix or whatever you want to call it. Like what mm -hmm. are you... What take on that whole thing so i feel like um i like the, the terminology old paradigm new paradigm um just kind of like a way of thinking and the choices that you allow your thought patterns to go into so so with the um, with the income stuff i feel like in some ways your life has been built for you so you're gonna be going to the public school in the zone that you're in and and go through that system and then when you're done with the public school you graduate and you get to choose what college you want to go to then when you choose what college you want to go to you choose what major you want to have and depending on the major that you have you're going to go out with that degree that you get and go work for somebody who's looking for that major and then you're going to be working for somebody to basically make that paycheck be reliant on this person this person's mercy, basically, you know, yeah. like, well, boss, can I please have a couple weeks off or can I have this this day off X, Y, Z? But, you know, that's that's is that really like what people are satisfied in doing? Is that necessarily what satisfies your your soul? Um, and I think for most cases, it's it's no. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good distinction there. Uh, in the most cases, because um, I from like a very young age, I. I mean, I, there's dignity in all kinds of work. We need all kinds of work and workers. But um, I, from a very young age, I realized that like, I need to create, like I love creating and making my own things. And for me personally, I was not, I didn't have that security, that ha that happiness and that like mental security that I could, that, that all my income is tied up onto one employer and one like source of income that freaks me out. I don't like that. But um, yeah, so like a wage, there's different like types of income too. Like you could be an independent contractor, which is what I'm doing right now. And I'm like getting paid with like clients and doing stuff like deal by deal, which is a little bit less secure because it's like on an ongoing basis. Like I also do sales. So there's like commissions with that. Like sometimes I close more in one several months and then don't close as much on other months. But with a wage, like if you're a W2 guy, you get a lot of that security. And like you're saying, like some people, really rely that like they have security as really high as like one of their values whereas for me i really felt like the inverse like that's a bit of insecurity for me to have like everything relying on one source because if that dries up if anything happens to the economy i know that employer is going to like hang me out to dry so wow. yeah man you just got to know like um where your value stack is and like your risk tolerance like but there's a lot of people that like they just they just are wages and there's nothing wrong with that it's just uh 
it's it, you just got to figure out how that conversation a lot of people like you're saying they have that funnel they're just going through the motions they don't really like question like oh i do like creating maybe i could do something else on the side yeah i um i 100 percent agree i like what you said with the risk part it's definitely like a risk type of reward or risk reward people can take the risk to get, to kind of be more independent and on their own but you're also going to see a better reward um yeah. and also what you said about creating is something that i've kind of come into in the past couple of months, I guess I should say, um, kind of realizing my potential and realizing like what I have to offer to people. I feel like I can have a message for people. I feel like I'm unique in a way and I feel like everybody is unique in a way and it's tapping into their own skills. Um, something that has actually helped me with the creativity part is playing an instrument. So I recently took up guitar and so I feel like the guitar has opened up different like pathways in my brain where now I'm like, I'm like really, I feel really creative now. Nice, dude. And that's I'm great. Really down to learning this instrument. Yeah, dude, the arts are fantastic. Like you need an outlet. I personally, every human needs some kind of like artistic outlet, you know, whether that's like musical or like, uh, like pottery or something like that, or even like just writing. Like, I feel mm -hmm. like that is an aspect of humanity that needs to be tapped into because you don't get access to leisure time and like art creation unless you as a community have covered all the basics. Like you have food, running water, like just the security, like basically like has those hierarchy of needs. Yes. Once a family or a community has like covered all that basic stuff you can get to the self-actualization and the people and the societies that like have the best art are the ones who have managed to like earn that leisure time so like thank god like people like you and i we live in the states we live in the western world like we have access to leisure time and so yeah if you if you have that access i feel like tapping into the arts even if you're an adult like it's no it's not late at all like just pick up something and start creating i think you'll get a lot of reward for it yeah it's it's never too late to learn a skill um, although i do wish i started when i was like 14 and i could definitely shred man yeah um, uh, but um there's yeah there's something there's something um very like intuitive about like learning how to play an instrument or even like you said writing or pottery because you're ex like you have that form of expression yeah. that isn't like it isn't in any type of language it's in its own it's in its own language, I guess. Um, and so you're kind of like rewiring your brain in a way and and making different neural pathways. Yeah. So yeah. it's like it's like playing for adults. You're like playing again, you know? Yeah, it's like it's like playing again. Yeah. It's like being a kid. I well, I remember after, you know, I, I had done surgery on my knee and the first, you know, well, obviously it's gonna suck, but I just remember being in bed and playing the guitar and like singing some songs. And I would play for a couple hours because I had nothing better to do. And I just remember like not feeling any pain at all in, nice. in my knee. Like there's some, like, it just completely was non-existent. I didn't worry about that. Um, wow. so I thought that was pretty interesting with the create the creativity part of it. Like it kind of blocked that, that, you know, receptor part of, I don't even know the scientific terminology, but, yeah. but I feel like you guys know what I mean. Yeah. No. It's a it's a really good distraction and it's also like uh, healing maybe in a way. Yeah, maybe it's healing, a yeah. healing outlet. Yeah. So what do what do you play on the guitar? Uh, I like to play more like indie alternative songs like Lumineers. I learned a Bob Marley song. Nice. Like Man's Joy. So. Wonderwall. Uh, not Wonderwall. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Jimi Hendrix actually. I can play Jimi Hendrix. Oh, nice, dude. No, no, I'm just kidding. I wish. <laughs> yeah, yeah no, I'm a wild one. Yeah. Um, dude, I've, I've picked up the guitar like three times, and like I can do like – I know all my chords and stuff, but uh, yeah, there's like a world of difference between like picking and like strumming. Like, yeah. Like, uh, rhythm guitar and uh, lead guitar. Like, what, so yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah the, the, the finger picking is its own world. I, I definitely like the rhythm, the rhythmic – playing because then you can sing along to it but yeah. um but i need to get better at the finger picking and it's and it's also rewarding in its own sense because you're developing a skill and each time you practice you're reaping the rewards um yeah. and that like that kind of that kind of system where you're practicing and putting in the time and getting the rewards will translate to anything in life so so yeah. like um, at least for me like it starts with the like jujitsu so like i 
I know that I, I'm practicing with jujitsu and I'm getting better with jujitsu. Um, the same thing with the guitar, like same concept. You practice, you're going to get better. Right, right. Do speaking of a uh, skill acquisition, you know, you've you heard the phrase uh, "practice makes perfect," right? Of course, yeah, yeah. So I read this book, "Why We Sleep" by Dr. Math. Dr. Matthew Walker, and he like says that it's actually when you're learning like physical things and also like anything like memory based, which is all skills really. Um, it's not practice makes perfect. That's an incomplete way to think about it. It's practice plus sleep makes perfect because when you sleep, it like actually fortifies your memory and like muscle memory is one of those types of memory. So if you um, sleep regularly and you practice, you're gonna like learn it much faster. And so that also works with studying. I used to like do all nighters right before a test, but technically doesn't help because you're not like solidifying your storage. You're not actually storing as much as you could. Yeah. Uh, there's definitely the saying sleep on it is also yeah. reminiscent of that, that these concepts, because when you sleep, your body is like, it's that just different state of mind that your body's in to allow it to recover, to allow it to like replay the things that happen in the day. Like, even though you don't remember your dreams or all your dreams, your brain is still active. Your brain is still replaying what happened through the day, replaying what you did before bed and yeah. kind of replaying the subconscious programming that you also have. So yeah. if you're, if you're like watching a TV show and they're subconsciously program you to mindlessly consume you, your conscious mind probably didn't pick it up. But while you're sleeping, like, you know, your brain is still thinking about the conscious or the unconscious consumption that they want you to, to do. Yeah. And like it's it's uh, it's gonna take up your, the best um, synonym for the human brain is the computer, like with storage and like electricity and all that synapses. Like it's the best uh, best analogy we have. And so with that, a lot of people say like, oh, I'll just have NPR playing in the background. It doesn't really do anything. And um, unfortunately, the brain doesn't work that way you are like you said you're programming yourself so you cannot ignore if you know english you cannot ignore the english language if it's playing out there like it's still like the sound wave is going into your head it's processing what those words mean the only way you're not going to consume something that's playing is if it's in like chinese or something you don't know how to speak chinese it's nonsense to you right mm -hmm. but because it's something you understand whatever language you speak you have to process it your your brain is going to process it because like a lot of people say, oh, no, I just didn't like tune it out. That's BS. If it had said your name, if it said Steven, right, like that would pierce through everything, you'll register it. So that's telling you that every word that's shooting out of that, you are registering it. And like like they said, like the, the brain is like a computer and you only have so much storage you can like hold in per day. So mm -hmm. it makes no sense to just constantly consume worthless storage space, you know. And so, like you said, like there's many ways to program yourself. If you don't program yourself, you will be programmed. And so just be super, super, super discriminatory on like what you consume. And one of the best things you can do is just like actively identify what are you, what type of consumer you are. I'm a very visual person. So I like podcasts. Yeah, but I like the video formats a lot. So I will go on YouTube a lot. I will like if I take a course, I'm like I'm like in three Coursera courses right now. They're all like video based. That's how I learn. And so I have to put, I think when we were on our last call, I think you saw my little time limit um, thing on my Safari. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, when I was sharing my screen, like I, I, I do those things, but I couldn't know that if I didn't know myself first. So like whoever you are, get, identify the type of medium that you use to consume things and then actively be intentional with how you program yourself. I think that's one of the best things you can do. I, I agree. You have to be intentional about what you consume because – because it's it's just programming at the end of the day and, and you can consume that positive content the stuff that the self-help content the stuff that's going to inspire you the stuff that's going to make you want to be creative or you can just consume the stuff that makes you want to be entertained or that to, to feed your lust or, yeah. or to feed to feed like your your loneliness like there's so many things that you can you can feed and so you just have to curate the positive things and one thing that helped me with my conscious consumption is becoming aware of the subconscious mind Mm -hmm. um, like we were saying earlier, like your brain will understand what's going, what's being said, even though you're tuning it out. Yeah. Um, so when you understand like the subconscious mind, then you'll understand how every single thing that you consume is, is going to have an effect on you. Yeah. And, and there's one thing that Arlen said about it was with, he was at a villa in Bali with these, 
uh, with this billionaire. Um, I think the billionaire owned the villa. And he was asking him questions about how, you know, how, how did he do it? What type of personality traits he has? Like what makes him a billionaire? And one of the things that um, he said to Arlen that stuck with me was anytime there's something on the, like there's something on the TV and he, he wasn't liking it. Like he just, it was negative stuff. Like it was some ad for depression. Mm -hmm. um, he would get up and leave and he wouldn't consume it. He would, he would get up and leave the space right. and not, not, he would not accept that into his reality. And, and that, that's coming from a guy who's made a billion bucks. Like, like that should tell you something about the mental fortitude that person has. And then I, I've kind of implemented the same thing and, and notice a difference like, oh, okay. I, it's easy as, it's as easy as me, like not consuming it. Like it's a choice. Yeah. Yeah. It's an active choice. You need to be deliberate. And um, because like, like, if you don't program yourself, you will be programmed. Like so many people, not only because like I personally believe, I don't know if you believe this too. I believe there's an actual active agenda to get people anxious about things they can control. And so there would be more manipulative. Um, but whatever you believe, you still need to like program yourself. Even if there's not like a higher power trying to manipulate you, like just a good Samaritan like news station trying to push a story, let's mm -hmm. say that uh, like they just need to do that. Um, they'll program, they'll be happy to program you. So like you need to actually be, the only person who will take care of yourself is you really. So you just need to um, be, like you said, proactive about it. Yeah, 100%. Can you, can you elaborate on um, the agenda to make people anxious about the <laughs> things they can control? Yeah, um, so I believe there are spheres of influence um, and one of the agendas, I think it's controlled by like the WF and those guys, like Klaus and that guy and those people. BlackRock, those guys. But, anyways, I don't want to. I don't want to get. Um, no, 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 it's all right. Suicided, but there's so. But people know what that is. I'm not gonna go deeper than that. But those, those get yeah, those guys. Um, actually, do you, you know BRICS? Like the like Brazil, Russia, like they're like trying to. There's this new uh, economic block that's surfacing with like Saudi Arabia and China, and the idea there is they're gonna. Right now, it's law that every country needs to hold U.S. dollars. Mm -hmm. And so right now, they're like going to flip all that. There's actually a rumor that on August 1st, they're going to start the domino effect. They're, they're going to sell all their, their dollars and they're going to be operating on U.N. now or Yuan, the Chinese one, Chinese currency. Well, with that, there's also another push and the Federal Reserve has been working on a digital dollar. And so with that, I'll go into digital later, but... To do these things, they need a, a citizenry of people who are just too either too lazy or too anxious to like do anything about it. And one of the most and that's actually addictive. Fear is addictive. So people will tune in and actually tune in, tune in and program themselves and plug in if you scare them a little bit. And so they weaponize media, they weaponize like people with influence to like push certain news stories to scare you, to make you forget, like you said, you can just turn it off and walk away. Or that you have your own sphere of influence in your household, in your community, in your family, and like that's technically really the only world that matters. Like you should like focus on that. One hundred percent. Yeah, and so they would want you to forget about that. They want you to worry about the Ukraine, which like it's a very like bad like humanitarian thing. I understand, but like you actually have no control over that. Your senator does. So let them like deal with that. That's why it's a representative democracy. They're representing you. Let them be in charge of that stuff. Like. What good does it do for a mother of four to like freak out over the Ukraine? It does nothing, but they want that because as soon as like the big ass comes, that digital dollar that I was talking about, they're gonna be like, okay, yeah, sure, whatever. Like as long as it helps. Big, there's a big push for like digitalization of everything, like even your cars, because like then they'll control your movements. They'll be like, okay, everyone, um, you have gone over your like, electricity. Uh, limit or your ration for this month like you're not driving anywhere also like with the digital dollar they'll be like hey you've spent enough on meat this month no more for you or they'll be like no payment processors visa mastercard they're not going to take your dollars uh outside this certain zip code because you're not compliant with like the terms of service whatever like that is that is what's coming so in order to do that on people do they need a citizenry of people who are just like too anxious to act on their own so that's a lot to unpack, man. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that is a lot to get into. But um, I guess uh, coming from my own personal experience, I like went down 
um i took the black pill like you take the red pill and then you can take the black pill or the white yeah. pill so so you can like take the red pill and you can take the black pill and become completely like like shit scared uh of what's going on and just yeah. let it consume you and like you said fear is addicting so you become addicted to being scared of the agenda yeah, yeah. but you can also take the white pill and realize that the only conceivable reality that you're actually having an influence on is the reality that you can see with your own eyes and people are led to deceive that they that this reality like isn't as, as inherently important as like other realities and that's yeah, why yeah. people are so afraid about the climate crisis and what's going on in ukraine and and all this stuff but but really the only thing you can control is what's right in front of you and yeah. and yeah a lot of people are are warning us and are, a lot of people are pushing the uh, at least from like i guess the red pill side like are very wary about this digital dollar that's coming in that, that the u.s dollar is going to collapse um and a lot you can it's so easy to get scared to that because you can like attach yourself to it mm -hmm. um but at least for me i i don't have any worry about it i don't consume that content i don't i don't allow it into my space firstly because I, I like consume so much stuff like last year I just I saw a bunch of stuff about how we the food shortages were coming it was going to be the winter of horrible horribleness food shortages water shortages and shit didn't happen and I consumed it all and I like told yeah. my family about it and like I was like we need to stock up food but that didn't happen and so I can like consume all this content and and like okay that could be coming and yeah it might be in the plans but it might not happen and I would have scared myself shitless for something that didn't happen. And at the same time, I also have trust in God that whatever happens is going to be okay. Like, like it's it's definitely a lot more relieving to just trust in in God and God's plan. Like, I can be worried that that you know, there's a lot of instability in this world right now, and that's a fact. Mm -hmm. But I'm not worried because I trust God's plan. Like God. I feel so calm with what God has told me and the things that God has has in store for me and has in store for everybody else. And I believe in divine timing and I don't believe in synchron or I don't believe in coincidences. So, yeah. Yeah. That's so powerful. That's a good message. Yeah. Um, I do think like there is a some utility in like taking the black pill like you did just so you're aware of what they're trying to do. Right. To you. But then, yeah, that's the main thing. Like, you have to actively choose to live a life, live a life affirming life. White pill, like everything's great. We're all gonna make it. Uh, find, find Christ in your life. Find God in your life. Like, just definitely like find something that makes you um, create and give more, right? Because, like you said, like if you just stay in the black pill side of things, that's not gonna do any good for you or your family or your community. Like, people are gonna avoid you because no one wants to feel bad. Misery loves company. Right. But I still think that like, just tune into what Alex Jones every now and then. Every whatever. now and then. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just like see what's going on. Like, yeah, man. Um, and then and then quickly pivot, like quickly just like say, okay, now I know somewhat what could happen, not what's going to happen per se, but like what could happen. Just be aware. And then, uh, yeah, live your life in a way that's like positive. I think that's super, super powerful. Yeah. This might sound a little woo woo or people might think I'm a little crazy, but if you're if you're constantly fixated on like a reality where where the digital dollar is being implemented, the US dollar crashes, we're being put on these rations with electricity and with our, our currency, and you're constantly thinking about that, you're gonna manifest that reality into existence. There yeah. are infinite lifelines where infinite versions of yourself and infinite versions of reality exist. So when you're constantly energetically intertwining your thoughts to that certain lifeline, most most likely you're going to manifest it. And yeah. so I can manifest this specific reality for myself where I'm either where I'm either, you know, held in my little fucking cage and given my soy meat bullshit. Yeah. Or I can manifest this reality of abundance where I'm traveling the world with the guys from tribe and creating an online business where I reach financial freedom and save my family, save those people around me. Like there, you have options. You can choose, yeah. right? Break free from the negative thought patterns. And it, the first step is just being aware that you have these negative thought patterns and that you can change them. And like, you're in control of these thought patterns. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. That's, that's the way dude. It is kind of, that's kind of like a, a variant of like string theory where there, there's multiple realities, like 
stacked on each other. It's kind of like one of those books where like turn to page 38 if you turn left. Yeah. It's like 50, you want to take it right. That's your life, man. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It's definitely woo woo, but it opens the door for positive and abundant thinking because then when you realize there's infinite versions of yourself that exist, uh -huh. then there's then there's infinite realities and you can actively choose that reality based on your thoughts and your actions. And through your desires, you must take action and think the right thing so that you can channel yourself into that reality. No one is going to put you through that reality. You have to like create that reality for yourself through your lifestyle. And, and by no means is it easy, you know, easier said than done, but it's totally possible. And, and they don't want you to know that you're that powerful, that you're that capable of doing it. And that's what, what, ties back to they want you for, to forget about your family. They want you to forget about the community. They want you to forget that you have that power. Yeah. Yeah. They don't want you to realize you have full agency of your life, like complete agency. You create worlds like yourself. Absolutely. There's actually a term for it in like physics. I forget what it's called. I wish I knew the name, but they're like studying like very micro, like very, very small scale, like at atoms. And they realize that if they like focus like on like one area, or something like that where they like actually didn't touch anything they're just like focused on a certain area like all these atoms are like con congregate there and they're like what that's so strange and it's basically like when you wherever you where your focus goes energy flows like what you focus on literally changes atoms and since the universe you me like everything is made up of atoms mm -hmm. that can be macro scale like if i am obsessed with german shepherds per se i'm gonna start seeing more of them pop up in my in my in my in my plot in my story like if they're in this cup start showing up a lot more or i'm gonna be like more attuned to them i'll start noticing more but maybe they were there all the time or maybe they're just like being popped in doesn't matter they're part of my reality now like i manifested that into reality and you can do that with bad things too so yeah 100 percent. i feel like in some ways you kind of open a portal like if you if you tie yourself to something you're opening that portal like if you all of a sudden become infatuated by the german shepherds you're opening the portal and now german shepherds are going to enter your timeline where you see them on instagram where you see them at the park right yeah. and and so i feel like it, it's some way if you look at things from an energetic level you'll have so much greater understanding for your thoughts and how reality plays out and then how you can interact with your thoughts and reality absolutely you know uh nikola tesla he's an absolute genius of a guy he before he died he said if you want to understand the secrets of the universe think in terms of frequencies and vibrations yeah that's um that's the classic old saying that's like the first that's like one of the first ones that i saw that was that really got me thinking about stuff like this um yeah yeah i did i um have you seen um something apocalypse ancient apocalypse or something like that on netflix it just released oh no i dude i don't even have time i don't make the time for netflix anymore to be honest with you no it's really good for you yeah no i don't really watch that anything at all really um when i when i lived in hawaii like people who came over to like visit like oh you guys don't have a tv like no 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 but uh dude every now and then i try to squeeze something this was i was watching joe rogan and he had this uh like archaeologist type expert guy graham hancock oh yeah uh, yeah he uh absolute g so he said he uh he was promoting this show on netflix so i immediately watched that oh and is this the show yeah yeah it's oh, like you know what? i've seen the first episode dude it's so good man <laughs> yeah and so one of one of these things that we're talking about like energy and stuff um someone found out that there's these huge like columns in like the pyramids which is already like a mystery in itself how you can like elevate these things and like multiple floors inside the that's just crazy but regardless someone found out that some of these columns can rotate on like an axis. They're like inside they, the pyramid. Yeah, yeah. They rotate, which is weird because can, like there's a theory that these pyramids are actually like power plants of some sort. Yeah, like, I am. Um... Yeah, and like a lot of the uh, pyramids, actually, they're not just like randomly placed there. Obviously, they line up with the stars, whatever. But like they're on like a on a spring. They're like on a stream. So there's like active the ray energy. lines i think so yeah like um the pyramids from latin america to um yeah yeah i, yeah. I haven't looked incredibly into that but i i do sympathize with what you said about um pyramids being like power cells yeah um, because i think i think i watched this documentary on it where you talked about the cathedrals 
and how the cathedrals, like the, the shapes that they have, mm -hmm. are shaped in a way where it can harness the the sunlight and through they the theory is that they they harness the energy through mercury i think it was red mercury and they would harness the sunlight and it would charge like the battery in the church and it would it would do it through certain vibrations but i have to go back and watch it but um it's yeah. it's actually pretty interesting to be honest and I, I watched this one video of this guy that talked about how the shapes in the cathedral so if you picture like the circular shape with all like the design on it that's actually a top view of what our dna looks like oh a helix yeah and, okay and so and so when you see like the churches that that's what i think about now is like what do these people know and why did the catholics yeah. take over all the cathedrals um, yeah so that's interesting because also like in these pyramids and like these ancient like worshiping sites they use not just any like rocks usually they also have like like quartz and like mineral rocks so like they have like some of these are like conductive material so they could build electricity a lot of people don't know also that uh the pyramids of giza they were covered in like sandstone or limestone they like smoothed it out and at the top they had like a lot of gold like a, the top was gold yeah. yeah didn't um i don't know if it was the cathedrals or the pyramids but didn't some of them have copper in them and they like found it odd that copper was in yeah. the structures yeah and if we were talking about energy and like frequencies and such like both these places were sites of like song like you can sing in a cathedral when you're singing um a it's super powerful like we were talking about playing a guitar how healing that is when you're singing you're singing in like different like these octaves and stuff and if you're doing it in community you're literally your chest is vibrating your soul is vibrating and if a song is powerful enough you're going to cry like it is also like a collective experience and so doing that in a place that has like conductive material built out of it like it's it's i can one can only imagine like how much potential energy is there if we're just right now we're just like missing something maybe it was burned in the library of alexandria we don't know but uh -huh. there's something in there that like we have all these pieces set up vibrationally that could create a power cell so i'm pretty sure there's this there's this woman who um who recorded the silence in a cathedral and then played it on a microphone and put it back into like the speaker and it was like a continuous loop and eventually it got loud enough where she could hear the sound and the sound that was playing was like i don't remember the type of sound that it made but it was resonant with her enough to like you know show everybody like look what the church this cathedral made um so yeah that's um definitely pretty interesting yeah that, that the, the cathedral was like vibrates at that frequency there's also like the frequencies like the hertz and stuff there's pink noise white noise like different hertz if you play binaural beats if you play one sound in one ear and another frequency in another ear like it does things to your brain like that's mm -hmm. improvement and i just think that's so cool if you want to focus you play like pink noise and all certain i don't know the difference between like i know i know of like i know white noise but i didn't like i know of pink noise i don't know like what what the differences are and what they're supposed to be used for yeah um i i know pink noise is the focus i think white noise is to like i'm not really sure I actually white noise is sleep oh yeah i think that's it yeah 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 dude i um i also found this very like free video of someone playing a certain frequency next to water source and the water like switches like changes direction interesting is it there's this book called the secrets and the hidden secrets in water or the secrets in water where the the guy doing the study he was um trying to figure out why he couldn't see the water crystals in in the in his in the water through the microscope sometimes he'd see them and he would be so fascinated by the water crystals he saw in there then other times he'd look in the same he'd go back and look in the thing and like where, where do they go and so yeah. he would get you know pissed off by it and he came to find out i think he stumbled upon it it was an accident where he he like had a a message of positivity i don't know if he said it or if it was like even him writing the message next oh. to it but when he that positive message was 
kind of in that same field as the water. He looked down and he could see all these crazy water crystals. And he was like, whoa, what in the world? So he kept saying like, water, I love you. You are so beautiful. And he whoa. would look in the microscope and he would see the most beautiful water crystals. And then he would say, water, I hate you. You're dead or something. And he would look in there and be like, oh, nothing there, nothing, nothing crazy. And they did the same experiment with plants. So they put plants in like a room, like three separate rooms, and they had a control plant with no noise. They had one plant that was played rock and roll music, like heavy metal. Then they had another plant that was pl played the classical music. And obviously the control plant grew like a normal plant, but the heavy metal plant, you know, withered away and it was just a, a wow. you know, it was a little sad plant. But the plant that was given the classical music was the most lush plant that you could see. And it is actually growing towards the speaker that the wow. music was coming out of. Wow. Yeah. And like classical music, is, it's all about patterns and like beautiful like structure and stuff. That makes a lot of sense. I've, I've, I've heard also that um, plants like emit noise too. It's just a different hertz that we can't hear. Right. We, we, we hear like differently. So it's, this sounds terrible, but when you cut your grass, they like measured it. The, gla the, the grass is screaming. Yeah. Yeah. The, just, the smell that you smell is like the grass is like, ah. Yeah. It's, 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 it's wild, man. I mean, it's a living thing. So, dude, I'm going to share my screen, actually. I think, uh, I think I found a video of uh, what I was telling you about where you, you can, um, where you can see the sound affecting you can see the sound affecting the water. Can you can you see the screen? Yeah, I can see. Okay, so twenty four hertz played on a water. Look at this. Check this out. Oh, whoa! Yeah. So, for those who are just listening, we're watching a YouTube video of someone who has played. There's twenty four hertz next to a spring or a uh, sink. It just has water on a faucet turned on, and it's making it into a helix. The it water a spiral. Yeah. Look at that. That's insane. That is insane, dude. And and I think how what percentage of our bodies is all water? Exactly. Or like 90%. Yeah, you get it. Exactly. Yeah. And and so then and then another thing that helped with like realizing subconscious, um, the subconscious brain and then conscious consumption is the music that we listen to. Yeah. And then you know if you think about like the rap music and you think about first of all the lyrics that you're being fed like money cars and clothes and hoes like bro what are you listening to man yeah. like, turn that off and then also when you're listening to the instrumentals it's not instruments at all it's you're being fed frequencies yeah yeah there's definitely yeah you can do a lot of foul stuff to people through that way too but uh yeah man if you're trying to like be a better not maybe not better but if you're trying to like find peace in your life um there's definitely objectively some music that will help you get there faster than 100 percent. yeah yeah and it's all about being conscious like like if, I, if i'm gonna go do a jujitsu competition i'm turning on rap music let's go <laughs> like, like i'm going i'm going to and like when i'm going to jujitsu class there's rap music but as long as you're like consciously like okay like i'm gonna go on a drive i'm not gonna turn on like this this like rap music i'm gonna turn on like this like smooth like like rock song or whatever like like alternative song like yeah yeah it's all about consciously choosing yeah, yeah it's, so, everything's a tool you can yeah. to, to use it yeah and there's like certain like i'll i'll listen to the rap like i'll enjoy it while i'm in jujitsu class but there's certain like rap that i will just not listen to like there's like certain rappers that i just choose not to because of their the things that they put into their music and then the type of persona that they embody yeah. so like if we're talking about like like I, I'll name one. Lil Uzi Vert. Like he has a song that's like four 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 plus two two two. Like what like how is nobody questioning that? Yeah. Right. And then like some other people, like they will actively like post things on their social media where they're like literally worshiping the devil, but nobody like nobody questions it. Uh like yeah. you go in the comment section and choose people like, Yeah, I'm your biggest fan. Like he has horns on his head. Yeah, no, the pe people think maybe I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna assume what a lot of people think. They think it's just like harmless, that it's not a real thing. But uh, a lot of people forget that Lucifer is the king of the of the earth, like of all he has a throne, his throne is on the earth. So, he, if you want to enjoy earthly pleasures, like he's your guy, 
and also he operates on um he needs people of influence so like that's the music industry you're talking about the the easiest way to like indoctrinate a lot of people to like turn away from god you got to go to these people with influence of music movies all this stuff and yeah i think it is like symbolism symbolistic in a way like you have to like sell your soul to like get certain positions like do bad things but i also think it's literal too i think of some of these people not all of them get this offer this faustian bargain but some of them do where they literally do sell their, their soul to like demons um and i'm, I'm gonna sound a little crazy saying this but i genuinely believe this uh, my dad has met an angel like an actual angel when we were in singapore we lived in singapore and like that angel helped him out in a situation and it's also in the bible like there are humans like you and i walking wow. around helping out and there's also like angels that are in life they're there to help you out conversely though there are demons and there are like actual demonic people who are not people at all these are not humans they're demons and they're there to tempt you and they're there to turn you away and they're for a specific purpose so when you do see an artist like that doing something like that an offering yeah, it might be some guy just trying to get attention, like just like doing some like nasty things for some likes. But there's also the real chance that this guy is doing the devil's work. And so rather than just try to like guess it, if I see something like that, like you, I'm just going to avoid it completely. So. Right. Exactly. And, and in the Bible, it says that they walk among us. Yeah. So. Yeah. hundred percent. hundred percent. So. Yeah. So, dude, this. Uh, this world, man, you just got to take care of yourself. You got to also like realize how much power you actually have and you don't want to give that away to nobody. Yeah, 100%. It's all about you. Yeah, man. And like you said earlier, like there's a there's a huge amount of peace. Uh, fear not for I am with you. There's a huge amount of peace knowing that we're on God's side and God is yeah. undefeated. So just lead, lead with your chest out and like helping people. There's like simple things that... that um, or like universal truths so just make you feel a lot better give you that peace yeah my um my friend told me this and i've carried it with me since he told me this he told me that every day he tells god that he's his warrior he says god i am a warrior for your kingdom and even me just saying that now makes me feel so empowered yeah. telling telling yourself telling god that you're a warrior for his kingdom how yeah. how empowering is that how empowering yeah. is it knowing that you're walking and you're a fucking warrior for for God? Like, there's yeah. nothing more empowering than that. Nothing more empowering. And I think it's also very telling. Like, if you read these stories, these are these very, very old stories. There are celestial battles between angels and demons for your soul. Like, that should put you into scope of mind to like at least question, how valuable is my soul, right? Like we're having like celestial like battles every day for the conquest of my soul. So just just realize how much value you have as a as a human being. You you were given something that is so powerful, which is a finite life. So yeah, use it for use it for good. One hundred percent. Angels angels want you to win. You yeah, have angels that watch Dude, over you. Have you seen a biblically accurate angel? Um, yeah, it's like eyes and with the wings, dude. It's crazy, man. Uh, the, the, the depiction of angels that we are given are not accurate. No, yeah, and like when Gabriel would show up, he would always be like, "Be not afraid," and I'd be like, "Okay, that's 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 kind of nice, I guess." And now I understand. Like, if, yeah, if this hold, on, let me share this. If this thing showed up, of course it would say like, "Be not afraid." This thing's terrifying. Yeah, I never understood it until I, dude. What what in the world? There's just <laughs> wings and eyeballs, and there's different types, dude. Yeah, these are like in a wheel. Oh, dude. Um, so I don't want to. I don't want to be too. I don't want to like doom scroll and do any like black pill stuff. But uh, there's a lot of signs in the Bible of the end times. And they're like all showing up right now, which is kind of wild. Uh, but one of them, I'll talk about one of them, is the Euphrates River. It says like, so we're talking about angels. Um, when Lucifer like battled against Michael and like the other angels, and then they were kicked out, 
the fallen angels were kicked out, God placed a, I don't know how many of them, four of them, four angels underneath the river of Euphrates. And angels said, are angels are fallen angels. Fallen angels. He put fallen angels, so these are bad guys, under the Euphrates River. And he said, and chained them up. And he said, when the Euphrates River dries up, these angels will be released. And then it'll also be a sign of the end times. Yeah, and it's dry, isn't it? It's dried. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but the thing is, though, when like we come back to and tie it to what I said earlier about like I I'm not going to allow that stuff into my yeah. perspective in my like aura. I'm not gonna yeah. allow it. And so when I'm not allowing that, I'm I'm still walking and and everything like still channeling what's in my reality exactly with, with using God as my lamp on the path. And repeating to to myself, I am a warrior for God's kingdom, yeah. and it, like that is only empowering in itself. Like we, I, I feel like this generation in specific is going to be ushering in the new world. Like there, we are going. It's a spiritual war, and spiritual. and and just remember this: the war is already won. The war mm -hmm. is already won. Yeah, it's 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 a bit selfish, but like you obviously want the people in your tribe to like uh, come to realizations of like the, how powerful the divine is and like how how rewarding it is to be a soldier for christ like you're talking about so yeah i think at the end of the day that's like a cho choice everyone has to make for themselves but but yeah man there, there's no point in doing scrolling yeah absolutely absolutely you can only show people the door yeah that's right well steven dude i um i really appreciate the time here we talked about fallen angels you talked about a lot of stuff this is cool yeah, totally branched off from what we originally thought, but I really love where the conversation took us. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. And, um, dude, I like to mess with people when it comes to, like, conspiracy theories and such. I was at a dinner the other day, and they were like, yeah. One of the guys was like, yeah, I don't, I don't really think we went to the moon. I think that was all Stanley Kubrick in the Nevada, like, desert. And I was like, you guys are idiots. And they're like, what? I was like, you guys are idiots. And they're like, what do you mean? And I was like, you guys really believe in the moon? <laughs> believe the moon is a real place bro yeah just escalated dude. <laughs> it's like <laughs> that is funny man yeah man so, dude, yeah. don't don't open another can of worms man we no, could be down here for another hour exactly exactly so dude i'm gonna let you go but this was a lot of fun man appreciate yeah, it man. Uh, thanks so much for having me on of course dude take it easy steven yes sir peace out